Hello, I am Erica from the British Society for Immunology, and thank you so much for joining us again for our second um, Q&A all about coronavirus COVID-19 vaccines. And today I'm joined by Professor Sheena Kruikshank from the University of Manchester. Hello, Sheena. Hi, Erica. Really nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Question one. Will I still be able to catch and pass the virus to others, even if I'm vaccinated? At the moment, we don't know if this vaccine or the other leading candidates are going to provide sterilizing immunity. That means you can't pass the virus to others or a partial immunity that lessens the severity of the infection. Animal models have suggested that the latter might be the case, which means that it would be possible that we could perhaps pass on some of the virus, we could have a little bit, say, in our nose and our upper respiratory tract. If that were the case, then I would say that you still need measures like social distancing and masks to help finally beat this virus. Question number two, is there any data on how long immunity lasts with the vaccine? Another really good question. Um, so in answer to that question, we know that at the moment, this is still a new virus and immunity to the virus seems to be persisting for at least six months. And so all that we can say definitively at the moment is that we would hope the vaccine would be the same, if not a bit better. Uh, but because the virus is new, because the vaccines are new, we can't yet say if we're going to have long-term immunity. We'll just have to watch this space. Question number three. If I have another medical condition affecting my immune system, is it safe to have the vaccine? The vaccine has already been tested on over 20,000 people and a variety of individuals were tested with all sorts of different conditions, different ages, different ethnicities. And the evidence to date would suggest that there was a really good level of protection from that. So at the moment, yes, we would definitely recommend that you do take the vaccine if you have another condition, even if you're immunosuppressed. It's just that the vaccine might not work as quite as well, not quite a good response if you've got a weaker immune response, but there shouldn't be any risks. Question number four. If I have already had COVID, will I still be vaccinated? If you've already had COVID, we would still recommend that you have the vaccine. We don't yet know how long immunity to COVID lasts, but we certainly think it lasts at least six months. But the way the immune response works to, to COVID or any other virus is it's got to select a unique feature of that virus to react to. And it's got a whole choice of those features that it can pick. And it might not always pick the best one to give you the most optimal, the strongest immunity. Whereas with a vaccine, we can pick the target we want to use that we know gives a really strong immune response. So often the immune response from a vaccine is even better. So I would say better safe than sorry. If you want the best chance of being protected against the COVID, I would probably go for the vaccine. I certainly will be. Question number five, can a pregnant woman have the vaccination? At the moment, the vaccine is not recommended for pregnant women. That is because ethically, we can't test vaccines on pregnant women. So the vaccine has not been tested on any pregnant woman. It's not that we're anticipating any great risk. It's just that ethically, we can't do that. So no, for the moment, no. Question number six, everyone is talking about not knowing the long-term side effects. Any reassurances? I think you can feel really reassured that we have one of the best regulatory authorities in, in the world and they have already gone through all the data. So the MHRA are an independent body. They have been going through the data as the phase three trial has been happening and they've taken advantage of a legislature that lets them 
put a vaccine forward more quickly once they've checked that it's safe. And that is because we have an emergency. Now, the type of platform that the vaccine's been used and been used to create the vaccine is really well established and has already been tested in a whole host of conditions. The only difference is that this vaccine is directed towards COVID. So yes, absolutely, we are confident that it's safe. It's already been tested in tens of thousands of people with no serious adverse effects. Question number seven, which vaccine of all the ones that are being developed might suit the majority of the population? That's a really interesting question. So at the moment, the government has invested in around six vaccines that they pre-booked or pre-bulked in orders for. And these are all on sort of slightly different platforms to create immunity. The issue with any type of vaccine is thinking about who's it best for? Does it work well in, for example, older populations? Are there going to be issues about getting it out to parts of the world or parts of the country um, around transportation? And the truth of the matter is that you can't have protection from this virus until the whole world is protected. So we really need to think about resource poor countries and ensure that they get access to the vaccines that they need. And so maybe vaccines that have less of a cold chain transport issue will prove better for them. Whatever we do, we need to ensure a good level of international cooperation and a good level of vaccination coverage to ensure we're all protected. Question number eight, if they had the right funding and attention, could all vaccines be developed this quickly? Yes, is the answer to that very quickly. Absolutely. It can take years and years to go through all these stages because it can take a long time to raise the funds, to raise the volunteers, to get the international cooperation so that we can test it in a whole variety of different situations. So absolutely, if we could always do this, we would definitely have vaccines out much, much more quickly. But in a way, I'm glad that that doesn't happen because the only reason we're doing this is because it's an emergency. And I would rather that we weren't all in such a terrible state of emergency that we need something that quickly. Question number nine. What questions should immunologists still be asking about these vaccines? Immunologists are going to have lots of questions about these vaccines once they're rolled out. We need to know whether or not they provide long-term immunity, whether or not they're going to lessen the severity of the condition if they don't. We also would be very interested to know what happens when we mix different combinations of vaccines. So for example, some of the mRNA vaccines may be better at producing antibody responses, whereas some of the virus-based based vaccines may be better at producing T cell responses. So perhaps a combination of the two could really optimize our immune response and those sorts of trials are going to be starting. So I think immunologists have lots and lots of questions and they're going to be involved every step of the way. The final question, this one has come from Twitter. Are the vaccines safe? Are the vaccines safe? Well that's a really important question and that's the whole point of the trials. At every stage of a vaccine trial, we are constantly checking whether it's safe, whether there's any minor adverse effects, whether there's any major adverse effects. Does it create the right immune response? These vaccines that we're taking forward now have been through three phases of this. The only reason that this is happening, this rollout is happening a bit faster, is because our MHRA have already been assessing the data as it's been coming out, and they've taken advantage of emergency provision to enable it to be rolled out more quickly. But it's passed all the safety tests, it's been test tested in tens of thousands of people. So I'm pretty confident that it's safe. Thank you very much, Sheena. That was really brilliant. I hope everyone's found that valuable. Please do keep following us and checking in for other resources and content around coronavirus vaccines. Thank you, Sheena. See you soon. Thank you, Erica. See you soon. And keep checking the BSI if you've got any other questions about COVID and immunology and vaccines.